Welcome to the lecture on Null Hypothesis. In this lecture, I am going to discuss a common question that the researchers have. Many researchers think, why do we test Null Hypothesis when we have a hypothesis? Before talking about this particular question, I would like to discuss what is Null Hypothesis as many of the beginners are watching this specific video. What is Null Hypothesis? I will start with an example. We have a hypothesis. Does the birth weight of the babies born to HIV infected mothers is significantly less than the average birth weight? That is our hypothesis. So we need to find out whether the average birth weight of HIV infected mothers is less than the normal birth weight. The average birth weight of babies born to HIV infected mothers, we will name that mu H, mu HIV is significantly less than the average birth weight of the normal population. So this is our hypothesis. We are not writing the sample means here. Now, what is null hypothesis? We denote null hypothesis as H0. So, H A, alternative hypothesis, H0, null hypothesis. Null hypothesis indicates the opposite or the negative form of alternative hypothesis. Somebody might think that the other way around is the null hypothesis. No, it is not, this is bigger than this. But null hypothesis states that the hypothesis is not O mu H equals mu N. That means we don't need the both values to be equal, but this states that these two values are not significantly different. Okay. As we have hypothesis, we know that we need to test the, our hypothesis, so alternative hypothesis. But instead is this, why do we state this one? There's no difference. The reason is, if you need to test whether there's a significant difference or whether there's a significant association, you need to know what is not significant. If you know what is not significant, then only you can decide whether this is significant or not. So null hypothesis indicates what is not significant or what is normal. In order to know what is normal, we need to know something special. That is sampling distribution. For that you need to have basic understanding about sampling distribution. In sampling distribution, we have the normal population distribution where mean is mu, standard deviation is sigma. We draw multiple samples from this one and we draw something called sampling distribution where the mean is mu x bar, standard deviation is the standard error. So we have two standard errors here and we have minus two standard errors here. We have many sample means within this sampling distribution. But in practical case, we take only one sample which is random and representative sample with adequate size and we calculate standard error and we draw the sampling distribution. Whatever it is, sampling distribution contains different sample means. All these sample means are random and representative. Especially those sample means at the center. 